All right, so uh, today we're going to be processing a Milky Way image. This is the image right here. This was taken at Ka'anapali Beach in Maui, and it was about 50 feet away from the resorts on the beach there, so there's uh, quite a lot of light pollution here. Uh, so yeah, this is a stitch of about 25 images with a ton of overlap to make sure I got it all. And uh, all that's been done to this image is the stitch and a crop. So uh, no processing has been done yet. Okay, so uh, the first thing that we're gonna do is uh, DBE or dynamic background extraction. And that's to get rid of all this light pollution here because we obviously don't want that. Um, so I have already set up the points here. I just put them in by myself because uh, I found with Milky Way images, if you press generate, a lot of the points are gonna be on the Milky Way itself and we want to keep that data, not uh, subtract it. So it's best if you just do it yourself and put it, you know, evenly evenly spaced out in uh, <clears throat> points where there's light pollution, obviously. So um, you're also gonna want to make sure that you have subtraction checked here because you want to subtract the light pollution. Okay, um, I also had to increase the tolerance here it usually starts out at, I think, 0 0.5, and I had to put it up to 0 0.8 to get this point right here, because um, that was in more severe light pollution. So anyways, we're going to apply this, and um, I always like to see the actual model of the light pollution that's been subtracted. It's just interesting to see, so anyways, here it is. And that corresponds well with our image here. Less light pollution here, there's a ton there. All right, so this is the picture that we get. And we can see that there's still some gradients. You can maybe mess around a bit with your uh, dynamic background extraction. Maybe run a, another iteration to make it more smooth, but it's not totally necessary. We're gonna correct this a bit with uh, background neutralization color calibration and SCNR to remove some of this green, but you want to be careful with that because sometimes you have air glow and that might be green or a red or even a mix of kind of orange and you don't want to subtract that out because that's, you know, a naturally occurring thing that you want to keep. But anyways, we're going to run with this and now we're going to do our color calibration and background neutralization. So uh, first thing we're going to do the background neutralization, we're going to click right here and that's to create a preview. We're going to just get a nice chunk of the kind of neutral sky that will be used for this. So let's uh, run that. <coughs> okay, we're going to create a new preview and we're going to get a nice chunk of the Milky Way and I like to go basically right at the Sagittarius region, right in the core, to get that kind of more white color here, but it shouldn't really matter too much. And that's our white reference, so click preview two, and background reference, preview one. And we're gonna leave this checked here. You wanna leave that checked when you are dealing with a wide field image, and in this case, we have a wide field image of the Milky Way. All right, we're gonna run that. Okay, and then from here, we are going to delete the previews and then we're gonna run SCNR. And so we have the options for which color to remove. We wanna remove the green. Um, I think this is usually a case when you use a DSLR, which I did for this image. So we're gonna go ahead and run that and you will see uh, the greens being removed right around this area. All right, so if we go back, this is what it looked like. You can see a, a lot of green up here and then we ran it and now it's gone. And we also have just a more kind of reddish tint on, on the whole image, which is good to see, because that's uh, this color right here 
is the natural color of the Milky Way, and that's what we uh, mainly want to go for. Okay, so now we can get started with curves. If you know how to use the curves tool, you can get a lot done. It's super useful. It's, you know, it's a basic tool, but so much can be done with it if you know how to use it correctly. And a lot of the time, you just have to play with it a bit, but there are some general basics that will get you going. And actually, before we do curves, we're actually going to make a, a star mask. So, just process, mask generation, star mask. And if you leave it in star mask mode right here, in the working mode, it's not going to work too well in this wide field uh, image. The masks that you have on the stars are going to be way too big. I mean, we have a ton of stars in this image. Um, and I found that they're just always way too big. So again, we're going to choose structure detection. And when we do that, we're going to have a pretty nice tight mask. So we're going to let this run. Uh, it takes a little bit. But, um, yeah, we're going to do that first. So we're going to, after this is, uh, after this is generated, we're going to apply the mask. And then we are going to invert the mask. So we uh, are protecting the stars. And then we're going to do our curves. Uh, I found it's not usually a problem in Pixinsight when I use the curves tool without a star mask. But uh, you do run the risk uh, if you don't have a mask and use curves where you will oversaturate your stars and they're just going to become these uh, very harsh white uh, pinpoints of light and that's not what you want. You want to show the actual star color. You know, you've got a ton of yellow stars, some kind of reddish, and you have some blue ones too. And we want to conserve those colors because that's what's, you know, really there. Okay, so I think I'm going to pause this right now. I know I've been talking a while, but I'll come back when it's done. Okay, so this is the mask that we end up getting. And if we zoom in here, it seems to correspond pretty well with our image, what you'd expect. So we're going to go ahead and apply it. And we'll show the mask. See, if we zoom in, you get all these white spots. That's the stars being protected. To see that better, we're going to invert it, and zoom in, and you see that they do a pretty good job. Now on bigger stars, or um, in this case, a good example is Saturn, even though it's not a star, it's a big uh, source of light, and it does not do a very good job at protecting it. And so you might want to play with the mask generation a little bit more, but uh, for this video, we're going to bypass that. It'll be okay. So we're going to um, invert the mask so it's actually on the stars. It's applied to the stars. And what we're going to do, I'm going to minimize this. We are going to do a morphological transformation. And uh, basically what this is going to do when it's applied to the stars is it's going to make our stars smaller. They're not going to be as obtrusive in our image. So I've already done a general run through of this image before and I found that 50% works pretty well. Now for you, if your image, it might be different. It probably will be different. So you're going to want to mess around with the amount and also it's uh, subjective, subjective in nature anyways for what you think looks nice and what doesn't. So for me, um, I ran this before and I just chose 50%. So once this is done, I will show you what it looks like. So I'll be back. Okay, so this is what we get. And uh, so uh, if we go back, this is what it looks like here originally and it's what we get now. So as you see, our big stars, they stay preserved or planets right there. And oops, our small stars, they get reduced quite a lot. So, uh, in general, I think it looks better. Again, it's subjective, so do what you want to do, but if we zoom in here a bit, you can see it a bit better. So, this is before, after. So, maybe you want to do a little bit less, maybe you want to do a little bit more, I don't know. Uh, for me personally, maybe I would do a little bit less, but 
I do like how this looks, uh, so I'm gonna keep it like that. Okay, so we're done with that, and now we finally get into our curves transformation. And what we first want to do, though, I almost forgot, is invert our mask. So now our stars are being protected here. And uh, we do that because I found it's not as big of an issue in Pixinsight, but uh, you can run the risk if you do a curves transformation on the entire image that your stars are going to get oversaturated. Not as in color, but in contrast. So if you did that, your stars, they might go from you know, this nice blue or this kind of yellowish color um, to basically just white. And, um, extremely white and so you lose all the nice natural color of your image so yeah I just do it in case basically and yeah it's just do it I mean it's not that hard okay so we're gonna we're basically just gonna do a simple s curve initially so I'm gonna bring up the top here I got a nice uh, brighter image and then we're gonna pull down the bottom just a little bit and now here is our midtones basically and you see once I bring this up our Milky Way gets brighter and our background gets a bit darker and you'll see this even more in a second so when I bring this up our background gets a bit darker and that's because here this is going to be going down once I move this up so yeah, um, I found that this midpoint tool, once you set your kind of anchor spots here, it really it really helps control the, the look of your image. Um, so yeah, you might want to mess around with this. You know, spend some time, make it look how you want. But I'm just going to run through it uh, pretty quickly for this video. So we apply that. Here's before, here's after. Just one simple thing and you get a really big difference already and also we'll zoom in we'll check out our stars here see before after they're they're the same and see and we're preserving this color and you can actually really see them start to pop out see before it's a flat image you apply it the color really starts to show okay i'm gonna keep this process I just like to do it um, out of habit. And we're going to reset it. And um, sometimes I don't do this. I'm going to make another mask, a range mask in this uh, case. You might not really need to do it in this image, but uh, we'll see uh, if it's worthwhile. So basically what you're going to do is you're going you're gonna to drag this. Um, and fuzziness, this is like for your detail. And I'm actually going to go not quite as strong here. I'm going to go probably right here. And I like to drag this a lot. There we go. I'm going to go back one more. Okay, drag this. And see, I'm doing it quite a lot. Okay, so our white part. And uh, this is what we're going to be uh, basically applying it to. I think. Oh, man. <laughs> yeah. Okay, and our smoothness, we're just going to increase this a bit. And so basically, um, yeah, we're not, we're not going to go too rough here, or too smooth. But we don't want to be super rough, so we're going to smooth it out just a little bit. Okay, we're going to apply this. Create the mask. And now, after it finishes here, we're going to actually apply the mask. And basically... Um, we might mess around the curves tool, or we might do some uh, local histogram equalization for some better, um, basically, contrast in the dust lines or uh, sharpening, kind of. You can think of it, make, maybe like clarity, that's a, a good analogy. If you guys use Lightroom, it's kind of like clarity. So, let's go ahead and show this mask. So, there we go. Right there. Or if I invert it, you can maybe see it a little bit better. We're going to be going all along here. So let's invert it again. And 
let's just see what the curves will do. A lot of this is just playing around, and we're going to do another uh, S-curve, basically. We're going to do a, just a slight S-curve, and we're going to see if this um, increases, uh, if it makes our image better, basically. So, yeah, you see it's being applied in these uh, kind of clouds. And yeah, you have a bit more contrast. It's very subtle, but if I increase the preview on and off, yeah, it might be worthwhile. So I'm going to go ahead and actually run that. And it's it's the subtle things that can make your image that much better. So it's up to you if you want to do it or not. We'll take a look at LHE. I normally don't like using this, honestly, for Milky Way images, because, um, I don't know, it just doesn't look as natural, and you got to be really slight on the amount that you're using this as well. So preview on and off, and now you can see all of this has more clarity to it, especially look at these uh, dust lines, especially in here, you can see that contrast that clarity really pop out then and I'm not a huge fan of clarity so I'm gonna go real minimal and basically once I apply this I'm actually going to zoom in on this area right there and decide if I want to keep it because like I said I'm not a huge fan and it can degrade your image so I'm gonna come back when this is done Okay, so this is what we end up getting. It's extremely subtle, actually. You can, at least for me, I can hardly tell the difference here. But I didn't apply that much because I'm not really a fan. So, anyways, you use it again. It's subjective. Use as much as you want. But, um, yeah. Okay, so I saw that uh, this video is starting to get kind of long. So, um, I'm going to go a little bit faster. So, we're going to go back to our star mask here. I'm just going to make sure that I'm protecting the stars. And this is what we're going to be doing for the rest. So we're going to do another curves adjustment. And I'm going to get more contrast here. Make Basically make the sky a bit darker. Make that Milky Way nice and bright. Again, we're just doing our, our S curve here. I'm going to pull this down a little bit more. Um, yeah, that's good. I don't want to go too much, and again, you want to be sure, you want to watch out that you're not clipping this, like, dark nebula, especially down below. It gets real dark down here, so you want to watch out for that, because as we do each iteration, you know, we're adding more contrast, so even though it says here we're not clipping, you got to watch out, because... If you do, you know, a ton of iterations of this, you're effectively doing just with this one huge S curve, and you don't want to clip your data. So, so, yeah, just watch out for that. Okay, so I just like seeing again what I did there. Good. Again, you might want to spend some more time on that. Next, we're going to be using this exponential transfer. Okay. And Basically, what this does is it's going to increase some contrast in our dark dust lines here. And it's going to preserve details in our highlights. So, um, again, I might want to mess around with this slider as with basically every tool, both of these sliders. But, jeez, uh, I think before I did 0.5. So, I'm going to run this and I forget how long it takes. Uh, I think it's kind of fast. Okay, so we're going to keep this going. Yeah, there we go. So, before and after. See our Milky Way is uh, brighter. And yeah, we got some more contrast here. And um, Check out these dust lines out here. You can see them kind of start to pop. You can see the nebulosity right in this complex. You can see it start to kind of pop out a bit. So yeah, we're going to go ahead and keep that, but again, back to the curves, because, um, I don't, 
I'm not a huge fan. I just want to do a slight curve there. A very, very slight minimal S curve. Yeah, see, there we go. We got better separation of this dark background with our bright Milky Way. Again, all subjective. That's processing is super subjective. Do what you want to do. Try not to deviate too much from re you know the. When I say reality, I mean the colors of the Milky Way. So obviously we can't see this at all with our own eyes. Okay, so there we go, and now we get into color saturation. However, I'm gonna go back to curves transformation, and I'm gonna do a general saturation increase here. That's saturation. Let's get our preview going, and we're gonna go around the middle, and we're gonna saturate that. And yeah, you don't wanna, don't wanna go crazy. But there we go. We can see some nice saturation as we go in and out of our preview here. So, I already think it's pretty saturated to begin with, and that's just from doing contrast. So yeah, we're gonna apply that subjective once again. Who would have thought? Okay, so now it's applied. I like to see our, what we did. Okay, we're gonna minimize that. Uh, you can invert your star mask to apply to the stars, but really, I think the stars are they're pretty nice and saturated. You might want to do a super slight saturation, but right now I'm going to hold off on that. Okay, now we're opening up color saturation. And this is more selective for what part of our spectrum here that we are going to saturate. So, for me, I like seeing the nebulosity here, these uh, nebulas here, you know, the lagoon nebula. Now I want to see that saturated a bit in the Trifid Nebula right there. So let's go ahead and no, it's about this color here, kind of magenta. And we're going to increase that. You see, we're increasing a ton of hues just from that, right? We see this being increased, this kind of reddish brown. That's because I brought all of them up. So, um, yeah, be selective about it. You see, I don't want as much of those browns being saturated, so... You create your anchor points again. So I'm gonna, there we go. And see, it's not as much saturated there now. And also, I'm gonna deviate a little bit here from uh, pure natural colors, the Milky Way. You know, blue is nice. I mean, that's the most common Milky Way, Milky Way image you see, right? People have a ton of blue. Well, yeah, it's because it's people like seeing blue. And yeah, you can see once I uh, apply this and uh, take on un unpolite, whatever, you can really see the blues right around here. Once I turn them on and off, you see it start to pop. So, um, yeah, do what you want to do. I'd say don't go super crazy, you know. We don't want that, but do what you like. And now I turned up the magenta bit, you can see it pop here and you know maybe I want to go this strong normally but I'm going fast I'm going fast now and I still want to cover the points so we're gonna apply that use your own discretion if you like it or not I want to spend some time with these hues if you got some air glow you know mess around the green or the red if you have red air glow whatever and let's check out what we just did Okay, before and after. You can really, you know, you see the blues pop and let's check out this nebulosity here. So, here is before and here is after. Yeah. Okay, so there we are. There is our image. You can use some final tweaks if you want, whatever that may be. Maybe you want to mess around with the curves a bit more. Maybe you want to mess around with the clarity from LHE, whatever. Do what you want to do. Um, but yeah, this is the image. Um, but before we're done, assign ICC profile. I don't know if a ton of people actually do this or not. At least on Reddit. Um, it seems like some people don't. They, they forget about it here. If you're posting to the web, you want this in sRGB. That's how it is. Your, your color space so we're gonna 
choose Panorama One DBE. This is our image right here. We're going to assign a profile sRGB. Well, this is web safe colors, but sRGB for the web. And you're going to apply that. And now, oh wow, my image is less saturated a ton. So, yeah, and you know, the colors they get a little wonky here. So, again, you're gonna have to go back to your curves. Generally, what, what I do is I just increase it a bit. I just increase the saturation, and you'll see the colors, they're still a little off, so might want to mess around with that. But there you go, apply the saturation again. Uh, mess around with the colors, the color calibration, whatever, if it's going on your website or something. But um, I'm going to go back to our this image. Uh, not all computers are you know, in the same color space. Or let's say, see here, I think, well, I don't know if it's in Adobe RGB originally from, I know it is because I used my DSLR. So, yeah. It was taken in Adobe RGB um, for my camera, but that color space doesn't correspond very well on the web, and so it might look good on your computer as a screensaver or something, but if you load it up on your phone, it's going to look terrible. So, yeah, you want to assign your color space as RGB, and there you go. It'll look good on the web or on your phone, whatever. All right, so um, this is our final image. Yeah, it's it's pretty processed, I know, but this is to show you the simple S-curve. That's really the main thing we used in this video, is our curves transformation. That's where a lot of the processing took place. A simple tool, and you can do pretty much all of your processing straight from there. Alright, so I hope you guys uh, enjoyed the video, and um, yeah, I'll see you next time.